In this video, we will explore several ways that you can insert an image within Publisher 2013. So first we're going to upload an image from a local computer. There are a couple of ways to do this, and the easiest is pretty straightforward. If you located the image on your local computer, you can drag and drop that image into Publisher. So to demonstrate, I'm first going to open both the folder and Publisher. As you can see, Publisher is already open and I have a folder minimized in my taskbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and dock this file folder on the left hand side of my screen. Now this is something that's easiest to do if you have a dual monitor set up at your workstation, which I do. However, since we can't see and record both screens, I'm going to demonstrate it using just one. So I've docked the file folder on the left hand side here, and as you can see, on the right hand side I can still see my publisher file because it is open on this monitor. So let's say that I'm going to insert the Gatesburg Country Club logo into this publication. I can scroll down in my folder until I see the logo that I want to include. Then I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button on that photo and then drag my mouse onto the publication and let go. Notice now that the image is displayed within the publication. Now there may be some adjustments that you need to make so that the image is the size that you'd like it to be and in the position that you'd like it to be, but we'll talk more about that in a future tutorial. In this video, we needed to get the image in, we got the image in, and now we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete the photo within the publication so we can take a look at another way to insert. In this example, we're going to use the insert picture command within the ribbon. So first we'll wanna select the insert tab within the ribbon, and then within the illustrations group, we want to go ahead and click the pictures button. And that displays the insert pictures dialog box. Next, we want to locate the image that we'd like to insert. Once we find that image, we can go ahead and we can double click on it in order for it to be inserted into the publication. And that's all we have to do. Now, again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete the image within a publication so that we can take a look at some other features in terms of getting images or image placeholders into our publication. Now, we're gonna take a look at this feature that is new to Publisher 2013, which is the Insert Online Picture option. So within the Illustrations group that was in that Insert tab, notice that there is an Online Pictures option. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that button. The Insert Pictures dialog box will be displayed. And notice here that we do have a couple of options. So first, you can choose to insert online images from Microsoft's Clip Art Gallery. These images are provided by Microsoft and they're free for you to use. However, you can not sell the images themselves as a product, so it's important to keep that in mind. So we can come into the box provided. We could type something such as golf ball, and when we hit enter, MicrosoftOffice.com will conduct a search. Now notice that when it comes to Microsoft Clip Art, sometimes these images are pictures or photographs. Sometimes the images are illustrations. Now if you're looking to make a professional looking document, sometimes some of the graphics you might find in Office's Clip Art are a little bit cheesy. So it's important to make sure that you're picking things that look professional and fit in with the overall look and feel of your publication. If you wanted to insert one into your file, you'd simply select it and then click the Insert button. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click the Back to Sites button so that we can take a look at our other options. The next option is to search for an image online using Microsoft's Bing search engine. So you would simply type your search keyword into the text box and then hit Enter. So in this example, we're just going to do a simple search for golf and then I'll hit Enter. Now it might take a moment depending on your internet connection, but you may notice now that different images are displayed when Bing conducted this online search. It's important to know that searching for images on the internet can be tricky due to copyright issues. So unfortunately, you can't just find any image that you want online and use it for your own purposes. The person that took that picture or purchased the rights to it owns it, and it would be a copyright infringement for you to use it without their permission. 
However, when you conduct a search for online images within Publisher, using this Bing Image Search, the results that will be displayed are images licensed under Creative Commons, which is a good thing. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that enables the sharing and use of royalty-free media. So Creative Commons licenses provide a simple, standardized way to give public permission to share and use creative work. So the owner of the media can choose which license should be used. These licenses can range from the ability of users to take a piece of media and download, distribute, tweak, and build upon it, even commercially, as long as they give credit for the original creation to the individuals who made it. Or they can range to restrictive licenses, which means that you can download the work and you can use it for non-commercial purposes, but you can't make any changes to it and you must make sure that you give the original owner credit. You want to make sure that you're aware of the kind of license that an image has before you choose to use it. Now notice at the bottom of this dialog box there is a banner that does say that the search results here are licensed under Creative Commons. You can choose to click the box that says show all web results, but just keep in mind that copyright infringement is a very serious thing, so you want to be careful when using images. I'm going to go ahead and click back to sites, and notice that the last option is to use an image that is stored in somebody's SkyDrive. And we're going to take a look in a later tutorial on how to configure that account. Finally, you also have the ability to include images from social media sites like Facebook and Flickr, which is down here at the bottom. Notice the two icons available. If you click on one of these two icons, you will be asked for credentials that you use to log into those accounts, and Microsoft will ask you for permission to link them together. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the Insert Pictures dialog box so that we can take a look at image placeholders. But feel free if you think that you'd like to use your social media images in your publications to go ahead and through this process and connect with an account. Now when it comes to image placeholders, there may be times when you may know that you want to include an image within your publication and you know exactly where you want to put it, However, you aren't quite sure which image you want to use in that space. And if that's the case, you can insert an image placeholder within the publication so that you can set the layout of your publication and then just worry about finding the perfect image and inserting it at a later time. So let's say that I would like to add an image placeholder into the blank page number three. So I'm going to move over into page number three and zoom in just a bit. Now we'll go ahead and we'll click the Insert tab, and in the Illustrations group, this time we're going to click Picture Placeholder. And notice that a placeholder has been placed within the publication. Now it just takes a default placeholder of a style, a certain size, and throws it in as a certain location. But know that you can resize this image placeholder to make it bigger, height-wise, width-wise. You can make it smaller. And you can also move it around so that you can position it where you want to. For example, if I wanted to place it into the text on page two, I could do so and then the text would wrap around it. Now that's an important thing to keep in mind. When you put an image placeholder within text, the text will wrap around it and those are settings you can change, which we'll talk about in another chapter. But if I put this image placeholder into a blank page and I click off of it, notice that you can't see it anymore. It is still there, but because there isn't text or other objects surrounding it, it might be difficult to see. So it might be a best practice, and just as a suggestion, that you might want to apply a thin outline around your placeholder so that you know where it is and it's easier to reposition and locate later. So if I were to select this image and click the Format tab, I could click the Outline button and choose an outline so now I can see it around my placeholder. Now when it comes to actually including an image within this placeholder, you want to make sure that it's selected and then notice the little insert image icon that displays in the middle of the placeholder. When you click that button, notice that the insert pictures dialog box is displayed. Now we have all of those options that we saw before for looking for an online picture, but then we also have this option from a file, which allows you to search your local computer, which is something that we talked about moments ago as well. This concludes our tutorial on how to insert an image within Publisher 2013. So in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to move
resize, and crop your images so that you can make them work perfectly within your publication. Thank <laughs> you.